morning. Uh, today we are going to discuss projectile motion. Okay, and with projectile motion, uh, when we talk about something being projected, we are talking about something that is in motion. It could be a tree fall, and this object may be thrown maybe vertically upwards. Uh, it can be projected vertically downwards or indeed it can be projected um, at an inclination, an angle. When you look at vertical motion going upwards or di uh, directly downwards, this is referred to as one dimension motion. Okay? One dimension motion or what you may call 1D. Alright? But today we are going to discuss this type of motion referred to as two dimension motion. Now, with regards to two dimension motion, we are going to confine it to uh, the x and the y axis. So if you look at the y axis and the x axis, and then we attach the sort of motion uh, within the y and the x axis, and then we study motion around there, then that's what we're going to discuss today. And much more to understand motion, we are going to look at the equations that are associated with that type of motion. So if you look at those equations, we're going to look at three equations. That is the time of flight in two-dimension motion, uh, the range, which is the horizontal displacement, and we also look at the vertical height. These three parameters can, among its other parameters, I know that you've looked at kinematics and you have a background to uh, motion and the study of motion, kinematics. And therefore, here now we're going to look at uh, two-dimension motion before you looked at one-dimension motion. Now we're going to look at two-dimension motion. And two-dimension motion meaning that you're going to look at motion in the y-axis and in the x-axis at the same time. You want to study motion in the y-axis and in the x-axis at the same time. Okay? So let's start by looking at an object that will be projected uh, at an angle with regards to the x-axis. Um, an object projected at an angle will take a sort of motion as it will go up there and it will sort of come down from there. This is an example of a two-dimension motion. So with a two-dimension motion, you have an angle there. This is called the angle of projection. Okay, We can call this one the angle of projection. Okay, so with the angle of projection, we're going to have motion taking that path, and after reaching this point, the T, which is referred to as the maximum height. Okay, the object will begin to come down. All right, so the object will take that path all the way to the maximum height, and then it will begin to come down. All right. At the tip of its journey is called the maximum height. This is the highest point with regards to the x-axis. Right. As mentioned, this is the angle projection. Now, we are taking into consideration the angle because as we go, you will see how the angle affects the motion of an object. So you have motion in the y-axis and you have motion in the x-axis. Hence, two-dimension motion. All right. Now, as the object is taking its journey, reaching the tip, the maximum height, and coming all the way down, it's taking motion, or we are going to view motion in both axes, X and Y. That is to say, if I pick a point, say for example, point A of the journey of this object, what I'm going to have is, for example, uh, maybe let me take it here. What I'm going to have is I will have an object taking this motion. Okay, for example, taking this motion. Therefore, as it is going up, there will be uh, what is known as the vertical velocity or velocity along the y axis, Vy, and there will be also. Uh, the Vx, which is the horizontal velocity. Now, at every single part of the journey, 
B hit at point A and at point B we're going to have BY there and BX there. At the tip there, because the object is no longer going further up, there will be no VY. So we can say that VY is zero there, but we have VX. So the object will take that journey there all the way and it will have VX and VY. Note that VX, VX is constant throughout the journey. Okay? But VY changes okay the reason is that vy is affected it's taken to be affected by gravity okay it's taken to be affected by gravity on the other hand vx is taken as linear velocity and uh, it's a constant velocity now let's take it back a bit all right so I've given you just a brief background to what we'll be looking at. When an object takes its path, uh, if you remember vectors, you will remember that we discussed uh, velocity being a vector. Therefore, the initial velocity or the velocity of projection, remember we talked about the angle of projection. Okay, this is the angle of projection. Then this is can call it the velocity of projection. So an object is projected with this velocity, but this velocity is a 2D, uh, 2D velocity. When I mention, when I say 2D, I mean this is velocity that will be looked at in the y-axis and also in the x-axis. Now, because of this angle, remember with vectors, because of this angle, we're going to call it angle theta, we can actually resolve this uh, velocity so that we can look at motion in the y-axis and also at the same time look at motion in the x-axis independently. All right? The fact that we are looking at motion in the y-axis at any single point of our journey, so for example, at this point of our journey, we are looking at motion at any single point, we are looking at motion both in the um, y-axis and also in the x-axis at the same at the same time because we are doing that this is referred to as a two-dimensional motion now at this point what we're going to do ladies and gentlemen is that we are going to resolve this velocity so that we know what is the velocity the initial velocity along the y-axis and what is the initial velocity along the x-axis Alright, so to do that, we are going to resolve. Remember, we had a mnemonic during uh, our lessons uh, in vectors. We were saying that if you are compressing a vector, you use cosine. Okay, if you are stretching a vector, you use sine. That's what we discussed. Alright, so in this case, we are going to stretch it all the way to the y axis, and when we do that, we we'll have u sine theta, okay? That is the, uh, the initial velocity along the y-axis. If I do the same along the uh, x-axis, we're going to use sine because we're going to compress the angle. We are making this angle smaller. So when we do that, I'm going to have u cos theta as the initial velocity along the x-axis and the initial velocity along the y-axis. So the value of velocity along the y-axis has been affected by the angle, hence we're taking into consideration that angle. In the same way, the value of the velocity along the uh, x-axis has been affected by the angle, hence we're taking into consideration the value of the angle. Okay. So uh, on the on the comment section, please do feel free to ask uh, questions as we go. Okay. It's very very important and I will make sure that I respond to all those questions as clear as possible right now when you look at um, what we discussed we said the value of the initial velocity we can call it VYI in the in the y-axis we said is u sine theta 
and in the x-axis you can call it vxi meaning initial initial in the y and in the x you can call it u sine I mean, cosine cos theta now let's go back to uh, the equations of motion with the equations of motion for an object going up because remember we are looking at an object taking this path so in the first half of the journey okay in the first half of the journey the object is going up in the second half of the journey the object is coming down so meaning that the time that it will take to fly up to uh, taking this distance is the same time that it will take to fly taking that distance so uh, taking you back now to vertical motion in vertical motion uh, you 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 were taught that for an object going up, the equations of motion which we were which were derived earlier are that v, which is the first one, is equal to u minus gt. All right. You call this one equation one, and then you say uh, for the second one, these are the equations of motion, standard equations of motion, which by now we have mastered. So s is equal to ut minus half gt squared. This is called the equation two. And then we also have um, v squared equals u squared minus 2gs. This is the third equation of motion. Okay, so we have these three equations of motion. And so we're going to go through all of them in terms of an object going up. In a similar manner, we are looking at an object going up in this first half of the journey and then we can because uh, we can actually multiply by two whatever happens here we can actually multiply by two if we know the distance covered under this graph on this other side on the left side we know that we can just simply multiply it by two and we'll get uh, the total distance covered if we know uh, the time it takes to move from point A say for example to point B we can just simply multiply this by 2 then we can get also from B to C that's what it means so this these are the equations of motion the standard equations of motion as we know them but we are looking at an object going up okay we are looking at an object going up therefore for an object going up this equation of motion the first one in terms of two dimension motion will be V y equals okay vy equals now we are not going to use this as the initial velocity remember we say this that this is the initial velocity along the y-axis and we we actually did uh, uh, use the component method of vectors to actually arrive at the initial velocity in the y-axis okay so in this case the initial velocity would be u sine theta okay minus okay gt all right the second one would be s equals which is displacement by now we know what the terminology stands for okay we have the u sine theta multiplied by t which is this t minus half gt squared in the same manner we do the same which is v squared minus u sine theta so we square everything because of that square there. We square everything to the power 2 and minus 2gs. So now, these are the equations that take into consideration the two-dimensional nature of our journey, of that object. All right. Now, I mentioned earlier, there are three parameters that we are going to look at. These three parameters will help us to understand the journey of this object, to, to be able to judge the journey of this object. Say, for example, um, this may not be a direct application to your study, but uh, it's the most applicable, uh, uh, most applicable uh, example I can give at this time. Um, this is the ground floor, for example, and someone wants to fire a missile. This, this is Earth. Earth is not so small. You have mountains, you have water, and so on. And the person wants to fire um, 
a missile all the way up to this point and they are on the other side so they need to make sure that they study the ground distance all right they need to know uh, at what velocity the initial velocity remember what you call the velocity of projection they need to know the velocity of projection they need to know the maximum height and they also need to know uh, yes the maximum height projection initial velocity and they also need to know the angle of projection for them to be able to calculate because these are usually computerized they want to calculate that the object will actually uh, drop at that very point okay so now we're going to look at these three parameters that are very important and crucial to understanding motion of an object uh, projected at an angle these three parameters are referred to as time of flight all right that's number one number two we're going to look at the range that's number two we are also going to look at um, uh, maximum height maximum height okay so we look at these parameters and how we can derive equations to do to find the time of flight uh, what we can look at the, what the range means and how to calculate that then the maximum height and its importance as well so we'll look at those three parameters okay now remember the time of flight is the time the object takes in flight okay as it was in the air how long was it for in the air that is the time of flight okay so we can look at an example right here our example is that you have an object flying all the way to there like that okay so this object is flying all the way to there so the time it will take okay the time it takes for this object to be in the air all the way to the end of its journey is referred to as the time of flight. The horizontal displacement is what is referred to as the range. And the vertical displacement is what is referred to as the maximum height. Okay. So you have the range, maximum height, and then you have uh, the angle of projection, you have the velocity of projection there. This is the x-axis, uh, I mean, this is the y-axis, and uh, that is the x-axis. Okay, and remember that we are looking at two-dimensional motion. Therefore, at any single point, we, know, we need to know what vx is, we need to know what vy is, Every single point vx and as well as I mean, this is vy and vx okay Okay, so in this case, I said we're looking at three parameters. I'll bring it here because I've noticed that you couldn't see it up there. That is the time of flight. Okay, uh, that's the first one. And I said maximum height. Okay, and I also said uh, this is maximum height. And I also said uh, range. Okay, initially the range was the second, but it makes no difference at all. Okay, so these are the three parameters we're going to, uh, to be looking at in order to study motion of a project. Remember, I said that the object that is going up in two-dimensional motion will have Vx and Vy at any single point. Vy Vx. We can actually we'll be able to actually calculate the resultant velocity at any single point uh, throughout the journey of an object. And remember, I mentioned 
that this value Vx is constant. What changes is Vy. Okay? Because Vx is constant, the changes that are in Vy affect the resultant velocity here because you use Vx and V, uh, use Vx and Vy to calculate the resultant velocity there. And in, at the same time, even at here, you use Vy and Vx. This value Vy and this Vy, they are two different values. But this Vx and this Vx, they are constant, they are the same. So the changes in Vy affected by gravity affect the resultant velocity at point A and at the same time affect the velocity at point B. Okay. So let's go back to those three parameters and the equations of motion um, that we are looking at at the moment. So at this point, I mentioned that the equations of motion in terms of projectile motion become V is equal to U sin theta minus GT, which you can call this one equation 1, then you have S equals uh, U sin theta T, you can call this one equation 2, and that is um, half GT squared, call this one equation and then you also have uh, v squared equals u squared u sine theta squared um, uh, minus 2gs okay and I also mentioned that when you're looking at the time of flight the time of flight of an object taking a projectile motion like that is that the time of flight has to be better drawn is that the time of flight has to be the time it takes to fly all the way to the end there and that that time half of these things half of that when you combine those things you have the total time of flight and that we mentioned that's the initial velocity okay and maximum height is we're going to call that uh, let's call it point B so that we have point A point B and point C there okay so in this you have Vx and in that you have Vy. Alright, so this is the y axis and this is the uh, x axis. Alright, so we're going to look at just half of the journey because anything that we can do here we can just multiply by two. So using equation one. Using equation one, the time of flight, the time of flight is given by, is given by V is equal to U sine theta minus GT, um, making T the subject of the formula of the formula what you're going to have is um, we take we can start by whichever way we can take this to the other side and take this to the other side or we can take this to either way whichever one we want okay let's start by taking this to the other side and bringing this to the other side so if this is a minus sign here, so if I take this to the other side, it will be positive. So I'll have GT equals U sine theta. This one is, is positive. If I take it to the other side, it will be negative. So minus V, all right, VY. Let me spot the VY there. Because we're looking at the first half when the object was going up. So we have GT there equals U sine theta minus um, the Vy, remember the Vy, we are looking at the first half of the journey. The Vy is at the tip there. Alright? Where we mentioned earlier 
that this the vx is constant but because the object is no longer going further up vy at maximum height uh, is zero so i will put zero there and say vy at i'm putting comment after that statement and i'm using the dotted um, to just make sure that um, that point is associated with that so vy at maximum height is zero okay because the object is no longer going further up so we have in this case you can divide the g there the g there what i'm going to have is t is equal to u sine theta over g but remember that we are just looking at half the journey so for us to have the total time of flight because this is the time it took to just cover this distance which is half of its journey so to know the total time of flight we simply say uh, put a comment there total time of flight total time of flight uh, multiply so multiply by 2 okay multiply by 2 so if i multiply by 2 what i'm going to have now i'll take it up here if i multiply this equation by 2 because i know you won't be able to see down there if i multiply this equation by 2 i'm going to have um, t is equal to 2u sine theta over g this is That is the first equation in terms of an object taking flight and ascertaining the time it took for that object to cover that distance in its flight. Okay. So remember to leave the comments okay, down there and then I'll be able to respond uh, to those questions. In case you're not clear about something, please make sure that you make a comment uh, down there all right so this is the first equation now let's look at the maximum height again in the same way uh, instead of writing i'm going to use this equation to calculate uh, to determine the time of flight i mean the maximum height why because the time is calculated uh, so if you mess up on the calculated time and then you use it to calculate the maximum height and then that means that if you mess up on the time, you mess up on the calculation for the maximum height. So I'm going to use uh, the last equation of motion. So ideally, the last equation of motion should be written vy squared is equal to u sine theta squared minus 2gh. Now, I've written it this way because this is vertical displacement, all right, to suggest that this is h max maximum height, vertical displacement. So in this case, I need to make this one the subject of formula. And remember, at maximum height, what's the value of Vy there? What's the value of Vy? Good. Some of you have answered that correctly. That's fine. So the value of Vy is zero. So we we'll say zero is equal, okay? subtitle there maximum height. Maximum height. Okay. So this square is a square for everything in the bracket. Okay. So this is you can write this this way if you like. You can also write it as u squared sine squared theta minus two g h max. So because of the negative, I'll take this to the other side for the clarity. I'll have 2gh max is equal to u squared sine squared theta. I divide this by uh, 2g and besides 2g, that and that will cancel out and I'll have our maximum height through the journey as u squared 
sine squared theta over 2g. So this equation is actually the equation for the maximum height. Okay, the equation for the maximum height.